let me tell you about Tahira Mathie's Shatter Me series. I will try to avoid major spoilers, but as I'm reviewing all six books, there may be some, so you have been warned. I picked these six paperback books up from the charity shop for a pound each and decided to have a look at them um, and see if they were worth reading. The books are Shatter Me, Unravel Me, Ignite Me, Restore Me, Defy Me and Imagine Me. I came into these books cold, never seeing any reviews, just the book covers. So let's take a look at the first one. When I first picked this book up, I thought that I would have a look at them, decide they weren't for me and sell them on quickly. But I was really surprised by this book. The cover and the blurb on the back made me, and especially when it says contains mature content, made me think that it was going to be something like Fifty Shades of Grey or something like that with a bit of, you know, naughty, steamy romance. But it wasn't that at all. It was something completely different. And I really, really enjoyed it. As I went through, I remembered to take a few notes. And the first thing that stood out to me was on page six. This is the bit I liked. <clears throat> it's like a negligent parent who only knows one half of who you are. It never sees how its absence changes people. How different we are in the dark. Hmm. I like that. Um, throughout this book, especially at the beginning, she uses these um, like crossing outs to sort of show the state of mind of the character, how she's completely conflicted, um, and it works really well. And as the book, and as the book goes on, obviously, some pages there's more of it, and as the book goes on, it becomes more and more coherent. Um, and uh, yeah, it kind of reflects well with her state of mind. And then on page 68, I thought we'd all enjoy this one. I spent my life folded between the pages of books. That sums up my life quite well, and I expect it does for a few of you too, us book lovers. In the absence of human relationships, I formed bonds with paper characters. I lived lo love and loss through stories threaded in history. Really, really um, clever bit of writing. I liked that. So by the end of this book, I thought, so she's actually an X-Man. Weird story progression, but definitely a page turner. And I wonder where it's going to go in the next book. Also, how in the hell is she going to go to the loo in this new outfit she's got if she needs help with the zipper at the back? <laughs> just like Spider-Man. Um, so my review for this book just after reading it. The book surprised me. I thought it was going to be a steamy novel a la Shades of Grey and that I'd be abandoning it pretty quickly, but it turned out to be something else entirely. Starting in an asylum with a broken teenage girl that was very well written, it soon became clear that it was set in a dystopian near future and the last few chapters felt more like a superhero hero backstory than anything else. I'm very intrigued to see where this goes in the next book. I liked the characters and the writing style, and yes, there were a couple of steamy scenes, but they worked in the context they were placed in and were okay, and made me very interested to read the next one. So the next one, Unravel Me, so on page 12. But time is beyond our finite comprehension. It's endless. It exists outside of us. We cannot run out of it or lose track of it or find a way to hold on to it. Time goes on even when we do not. Really like that phrase. And then on page 29... She address, addressed my worries from the last book when she said, I've learned to zip myself up without help from anyone. <laughs> Which I was really pleased about because I was really worried about her in this suit. <laughs> um, so when it got to this page, I said, <laughs> Juliet is really starting to pee me off. There's more to a relationship than sex, and I know she's an inexperienced teenager, but really, stop being so self-absorbed. But 
luckily, by the time I got to 100, page 147, Kenji said exactly what I wanted to say. Bravo. Well done, author. Now make her a better person. <laughs> On page 327. On the darkest days, you have to search for a spot of brightness. On the coldest days, you have to seek out a spot of warmth. On the bleakest days, you have to keep your eyes onward and upward. And on the saddest days, you have to leave them open to let them cry, to let them dry, to give them a chance to wash out the pain in order to see fresh and clear once again. That's really moved me, that section. By the end of this book, I enjoyed it. It was a quick read. There were some moments of deep, insightful meaning, some thrills and some interesting characters and world building. However, there were also moments that made me cringe and want to kill the heroine myself. I expect that was partly intentional on the author's part, though, so I'll let it slide and read the next one. And the next one was Ignite Me. I read through this one pretty quick and actually didn't stop to take too many notes, um, except for, I think it might be towards the end, um, 358. Here, this piece really stood out to me. Words are like seeds, I think, planted into our hearts at a tender age. They, take, they take root in us as we grow, settling deep into our souls. Good words plant well, they flourish and find homes in our hearts. They build trunks around our spines, steadying us when we're feeling most flimsy, planting our feet firmly when we're feeling most unsure. But the bad words grow poorly. Our trunks infest and spoil until we're hollow and housing the interests of others and not our own. We're forced to eat the fruit those words have borne, held hostage by the branches growing arms around our necks, suffocating us to death one word at a time. Very powerful piece, especially in the context of the book. And uh, yeah, I really like that. I liked this dystopian novel, which felt like, like an X-Man backstory. The characters mature a lot in this one and are all likeable. The romance sections felt a little overdone and out of place. And I felt that like they could have toned them right down without damaging the story at all. And it would have then made this novel more accessible to younger readers and a wider audience. I get the impression that the series started as a hot romance with the usual two brothers trope. But it is really so much more. It gives us an insight into mental health, personal growth and the state of our society and where it could be heading. In amongst the panting teenage angst, there are some really insightful, beautiful moments. Enough to make me read the next one. Restore me. So on page two, something that doesn't happen very often is a word that I didn't know and I had to look up in a dictionary. And that word was conniption. It's American English. It means a fit of rage or alarm. And it says, your boyfriend is having a freaking conniption right now. <laughs> Never heard that before. So, yeah, taught me a new word. Thank you very much, Tahira. Um, and then on page 16. I'm starting at the bottom anyway. I hated him with a violent intensity I've never since experienced. But the fire of true hatred, I realise, cannot exist without the oxygen of affection. I would not hurt so much or hate so much if I did not care. That meant quite a bit to me with a relationship that I've had in the past. <laughs> Very well captured. Um, throughout this book, there was flashbacks to Juliet's journal, from which you would have thought would have been from the first book. But they were clearly written afresh and they seemed really off compared to the first book in that they were in that. In the first one, there was the crossings out and it was more haphazard, as you would expect from someone in her mental state. But in this book, they seem too refined and coherent. And I found that a little bit jarring. I think if you read this book um, a long time after you'd read the first one, 
you might not have remembered that and you could it would probably be you know pass you by without realizing it but as i read these quite soon after each other um it just felt a bit jarring to me and i'm here once more in the abyss dissolving slowly in the acid of emotion <laughs> She's got such a good turn of phrase sometimes. <laughs> really like it. I wasn't sure at the end of the last book how this series would pan out. In most st stories, once the regime is overthrown, the story ends and you're left dreaming of their happy ever after. It was quite refreshing, therefore, to see what happened next. And it was totally believable that it would be an enormous undertaking. I was a little frustrated with some of the relationship dynamics in this one and I had to keep reminding myself that they're teenagers. The trajectory of events was surprising and really ramped up, leaving me rushing to get the next book down from the shelf to see what happened next. I recommend you don't read this book if you don't have the next book to go straight on to. And the next one was Defy Me. Um, page 64. She smiles then, smiles so big I feel my heart explode, make a mess inside my chest. <laughs> I think it just summed up that character's feelings so well in that moment. That was so lovely. At the end of the last book, I was wondering if they were actually in a simulation. And at the end of this one, it turns out that they kind of are, but in, not in the way I thought. Really looking forward to the finale of this one. Um, I must have <laughs> liked it and I read it pretty non-stop um, to the point that I didn't even stop and make that many notes on it because I just wanted to get through the story and find out what was happening. Started this one right after the previous book in the series, eager to find out what was happening and I wasn't disappointed. This one was hard to put down. So many revelations, great character arcs and let's not forget the romance. Although I felt it didn't need to be that explicit to get the point across. It's all starting to make sense and coming together beautifully, ready for the final showdown, I guess, in the last book. Bring it on. So I did. I went straight to the last one, which was Imagine Me. Um, similar to the last one, I think I must have read this quite quickly because I didn't make a massive amount of notes, which normally means I'm too involved in the story to stop and think about taking notes. Um, but I did make a note on page 310. Mm. I imagine... Me. Extraordinary. Unbroken. The girl who shocked herself by surviving. The girl who loved herself through learning. The girl who respected her skin. Understood her worth. Found her strength. Strong. Stronger. Strongest. Imagine me. Master of my own universe. I am everything I ever dreamed of. Beautiful piece of writing. I got into this book straight after the last one. It was quite a roller coaster ride in that it was fast moving and made me feel a little sick in places, but was ultimately unsatisfying at the end, leaving me wanting something more. Yes, the story came to a conclusion, but it was very dis but it felt very disjointed and hurried at the end and seemed to stop in a weird place. It seemed like the author had lots of ideas for this book and couldn't make up her mind, so she just chucked them all in together. I enjoyed it, but it could have been so much more. And I know that the author's written a few novellas since then, which goes in with this, and I wonder if they help tie things up a bit better um, and flesh out a few bits. Um, I'll have to keep my eyes open and see if I can find them. But on the whole... Not at all what I was expecting, um, and so pleasantly surprised, and I really, really enjoyed them. Um, I wouldn't rush to read them again, which is my sign for a five-star book, <laughs> um, but yes, I would recommend them. They're, they're hard to categorise, but very, very interesting a very quick read because they just they're just page turners they just want you to keep reading them and um yeah i really really like them and i was very happy to sell them 
And now I've got to go and pack them up and send them off. And I really hope that the person who bought them enjoys them as much as I did. Have you read these books? Did you like them? Would you recommend them? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe. I'm off to read a book.